electrifying, fiercely beautiful, compelling, provocative and disruptive. These are just a few of the impactful words that have been used to describe the multidisciplinary artistic spectacle that is William Kentridge's The Head and the Load. From Uganda, 190,000 carriers. Kendridge's exploration of Africa's role in the First World War combines music, dance, film projections, mechanized sculptures, and shadow play to illuminate the untold story of the millions of African porters and carriers who served, and in many cases died for, British, French, and German battlefield forces. Freighted with the weight of this little examined history and quickened by Kentridge's visionary theatrical alchemy, The Head on the Load is an exceptionally ambitious work of performance. Thank you for joining us once again at the city of Joburg. Um, what an amazing production. Um, so much work has clearly gone into this. Mm. How much time have you guys spent in preparation for this? I know it's been pre-COVID pre even. Yeah. I think it's almost the whole year because William is also not available. So if he gets like two weeks, then we all gather and uh, he creates workshops whereby we're dropping all the ideas into the coffer and then he leaves and yeah. sees something. So almost a year before it, we started rehearsing. Mm. Yeah. And what would you say is the purpose of this particular production, The Head and the Load? Because I know there's a lot going on and there's, there's a very deep um, message involved. I think uh, people, or let me say human beings in the whole world, mm -hmm. um, they have this constant amnesia of wanting to forget what happened in the past. Uh, they want to move on without knowing what happened in the past so that they can find a solution and create a beautiful and bright future. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I mean, the people don't want to hear about apartheid. People don't want, don't, don't want to hear about the First World War. Mm -hmm. But look at what is happening in Russia. Mm -hmm. So we need to know what happened in the past so that we can avoid all these uh, wars, unnecessary wars. Look at what, what is happening in, in Khartoum, Sudan, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Congo. Mm -hmm. It's because we ignored everything that happened in the past. Had we dealt with it, we, it wouldn't be happening because we would know the meaning yeah. of it. How, how does it affect our people? It, 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 it hurts people, it kills people, it leaves orphans, uh, it leaves widows. It, there's quite a lot of damage that is happening. And, and Hansel said it, it happened in the First World War. I'm playing the role of a general who is oppressing and killing his own people in order to impress the colonizer. And at the end of uh, uh, The Head and the Load, he doesn't have a solution, he's, he's regretting throughout. So we should see all these things and avoid going into war. I mean, we haven't explored love and peace. Let's give ourselves that opportunity. We, we've been, I mean, imagine that's from the first world war until now, we're fighting, fighting for minerals. What a bore. There's quite a lot. I mean, we need to appreciate this world. It's beautiful, the landscape. All we should be doing, we should be touring the world and see the beauty and appreciate. We spoke to friend of the city and regular to the Joburg Theatre stage, Hamilton Lamini, to discuss what it takes to create the magic behind this grandiose offering and how theatre can be used to prevent history from repeating itself. You know, just off camera we were having a conversation about, you know, the link of history and what is happening in today's world. So what do you think the audience has to look forward to in terms of making that link between the First World War that I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't even know that um, Africans and South Africans were involved in the World War in that way. So what kind of link would you find in, in what was happening in the First World War and what is happening in today's world? Um. Uh, black people were exploited in the First World War. Those who survived were, were rewarded with medals, uh, meaningless medals, 
and then they got the watches which could have been taken from one of the corpses and rewarded them or bicycles or they were given boots or a heavy jacket we still don't acknowledge those people and we claim we, we are in power we're supposed to acknowledge them and the other thing that i keep saying we need to go as, as black people there are rituals that we should be doing we need to go fetch those soldiers from where they died and bring them home and say okay now here we are reigning uh, in this in this dream that we wanted to achieve but we know we seem not to be doing that and what is happening currently the case of load shedding water shedding potholes yes it's because we're operating alone our ancestors are not with us and those ancestors are the soldiers who participated who knew why they were fighting and uh, in the first world war and the benefits we're going to, I mean, they, we've got a letter, but Chilembo's letter, where Chilembo was asking, what are the benefits of black people in the First World War? Mm -hmm. And the objective, in fact, the mission by the European countries was to dissect South Africa, the entire continent, into four, 54 states, which is what is currently happening. And nothing has stopped from that damage mm -hmm. because people don't understand what happened in the First World War. We need to know what happened in the First World War and we need to reset and say, let's renegotiate, guys. It doesn't work. So these wars are going on because it has become a norm or a culture. Uh, by, uh, I mean, some children are born in, in wars. I mean, can you imagine a woman is pregnant, she's, she's running away from the bombs, but children are born and they're going through the trauma and yeah. This mess can only end up if, if we sit down and unpack every encounter that affected human nature and find solutions. Life is beautiful, life is good, but we need to know why is it good, how do we make it good. So, you know, what I picked up when I watched the production is that there's, there's so many elements to this because not only does there have to be that entertainment element and not just surface level entertainment it's entertainment that grasps at every all your senses mm. but there's also a huge educational element which means that a lot of research has had to be done so what kind of challenges did you guys face in terms of going through all that research that i'm sure you guys had to do and then take those insights and transform that into a, an entertaining piece yet educational yet just one that grabs you and puts you into a world that you didn't even know existed mm, the, i think the best person uh, is william kentridge mm -hmm. he's got a smart way of addressing tragic things and through satire and and through a smile through through uh, light words mm. so that people can see themselves and and the damage that they are doing to their world so you don't have to point a finger and confront them it, it, it's it's a smart smart way to confront uh, a tragic moment let's say yeah so william we has a brilliant way of doing that mm. i mean look at our set and the actors the way we dress up and yeah it's it's light but the text is the one that takes you there i mean i have got some lines that i say uh, it is very sad uh, but I'm, i may as well tell you that i killed one european myself i'm not sleeping well i'm sleeping very badly i have killed many black men and not felt like this and that's william and, and it closes the show and people are like, oh my God, oh, this is heavy. And that's it. Out of everything they've seen, but it's how he puts his words. And they, William deals with less, uh, less good idea. He's not taking those lines that, you know, Shakespeare, uh, just that line that you ignore. He uses it to, uh, he creates a punch with it and it works. So it's words, it's a fusion of words and all the accolades should go to William, I mean, number one, and then we are an ensemble, you know, we were contributing some elements that we think can be put in order to tell the, this good story. And yeah, basically it's William and the team. I, I, I have to echo what you're saying and I completely agree. And I distinctly remember that line that you're speaking about and the effect that yeah. it caused, not just me and just ex observing the, the crowd or the, the audience right there. Mm. There was a scene in the, towards the beginning of the play where um, you were interacting with some of um, the cast and you guys were speaking in gibberish. Yes. How did you tackle that? Because firstly, how do you remember that gibberish? It's not a real language. But also, how 
do you um, I, we didn't need to know what you were actually, we didn't need to know the words, mm. but we knew what was happening. You, you, you created meaning with that gibberish. How do you tackle a scene like that? Because it, it's not easy, I'm sure. It's, no, well, it's not easy from, <laughs> from a distance, but William likes to make things easy. And he gives us a map, he says, these guys are having a debate. Uh, they want to colonize Africa. Now, they need to get an equal share by dissecting America. So they disagreeing. This one wants to, to have more, which is Britain, and France wants to have more. And then the Portuguese, the Portuguese are like, but why do we have less? The Germans are also having less. That's where the war starts. They need the fighting for the equal share. So first paragraph, William Place is like, okay guys, Fums Bovataza U Pogif Qui A. He says he's introducing guys. Uh, this is uh, the opportunity of a lifetime. These people have, have land and they don't know how to utilize it. How can we dissect it and steal it from them? The second phase is okay, they come up with strategies on how to uh, to map that out and, and, and start uh, by uh, start gaining uh, from the first idea and the third they fight here yeah. so when, once we have that and then you look at the words you see from merely holding your script like this you can see those images and and, and that's it so it's so we don't we, we will we will never forget because of those landscapes and there yeah it makes it easy and people think what we are holding is the text. Yeah, no, it's not. Myself. Nay, there's no, there's nothing. Mm. So then, yeah, it's it's. He mapped it around that. So first paragraph, it's about this guy introduces it and that's it. So we remember very well, okay, this one says fooms, okay, okay, I must reprim reprimand them. Guys, oh wait, we can't fight. We will all get this Africa. So out of 54 states, how, how, how much does, he, how, many, how many states does one have? No, this one says, no, I cannot share with this one. Yeah, he's a Portuguese and that's it. No, but, uh, it's beautiful and yeah, he, William made it light. I thought when I saw the text, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and uh, so he just said, no, don't worry. Lovely. And anyway, William does it alone. Mm. Oh. Alone, when he's, do he's doing uh, presentations and exhibitions somewhere, he loves it. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's his best scene in the show. <laughs> With music composed and conceived by Philip Miller with Tutugas Bisi, this large-scale performance work runs across a purpose-built stage stretching 50 meters along the back of the Nelson Mandela Theatre with an intimate seating configuration for approximately 500 audience members. You know, carrying on from, you know, um, that the whole thing about adding meaning to um, words that you may not understand. There's a lot in the production where there's different languages and in some po in parts the languages are being translated but it's not a literal translation that I picked up um, and I was lucky enough I'm afforded the chance to actually be able to understand you know both people that were speaking at, 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 at a certain time at one point it was just Zulu and um, and English. How do you find that different the way that different audiences interact with things like that because I interacted and found a different meaning and therefore I had a different kind of reaction when it was the Zulu part. But there are other audiences, I know the show has gone to international audiences, how do they interact with um, those kinds of scenes versus the way that South African audiences interact with the show? Uh, this is a South African show by a South African eye. Mm. So I like the, the Williams approach. Uh, some, sometime, sometimes we we kill the meaning of the story by trying to translate to, to lazy people who do not want to learn and understand other people's languages. There you lose something as soon as you start. Be, because that is why William, William told us that he doesn't need direct tra translation. Text is not the same as performance text. And well, those who cannot read uh, 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 who cannot read English, it's spoken. Mm -hmm. And then those who cannot hear it, it's, 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 it's translated there. And we also have German, 
which is not translated. Schwarze, die Schwarze. Die, die, you black people, we know. And you can go to Google and find out why, what does mean Schwarze, die. Schwarze, Schwarze are blacks. Die, uh, they're, 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 they're the devils, and they must die, it's that. And yeah, it, 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 we also have French. Le U, Le A. Uh, people are always complaining about France, France, France. What's wrong with French? Because we're doing you a favor. You guys were, were uncivilized, and, and that's basically for the French. And yeah. I guess it's William's approach, yeah, and, and he said, because before, we, uh, when the show opens, it was Mneti Sishabang who opened it in Siswati, mm -hmm. and now Tambuza is opening it with Istosa. Mm -hmm. We're also part of the world, yes. and let's not translate, if you're not interested, we'll leave it at that. So it's also, it's got poetry within, it's, it's a capsule of uh, artistic, mental provocation <laughs> or poking so that people can understand that just just learn all the languages listen and speak and understand how do other people feel yeah couldn't have said it any better <laughs> um there's a lot of emotion in in this production and emotion that you guys as the performers have to give us as the audience and the emotion that we give you guys back mm. um i th there was a lot of rage there was a lot of um, enlightenment, there was a lot of um, sorrow, you know. Mm. So how do you prepare emotionally and physically for such an emotionally demanding role um, and to have to do it night after night after night? Uh, hey, this show is a strange show. Uh, well, some, you don't have to personalize it. If you could personalize it, uh, yeah, yeah, you could faint or whatever. So you need to detach and stay away from whatever we are uh, whatever we are about to do. Mm -hmm. So we meditate and meditation is to chase away our personal emotions and say this is a performance. But even though it's like that, you're still putting emotions. But as a trained actor, you need to know when to enter the character and exit. Mm -hmm. Because if you could take it with, it's gonna mess you up. Mm -hmm. This is a heavy piece. Yeah, so. Yeah, we, 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 we meditate, we, we, we also sing at backstage, you know, trying to say, okay, we bring our ancestors and say, we, we got this opportunity that uh, we will be telling this story that is untold. Mm -hmm. So th we sing, we dance, we make sure that, okay, we are about to get in trance now and tell this story. Mm -hmm. So there is a way at backstage to, and, and pray us that this thing must not be attached to us because after watching a show like this, you could end up being a racist. Mm -hmm. There is rage within the text that why do white people do this? Where is humanity? And why do black people allow themselves to be victims? It's, it's, it's that. It, it, yeah, then you do it, you pull out. <laughs> that's, yeah, I think that's all. We have a special way. Just going by what you're saying, now it's the second time you've uh, you brought up the element of spirituality um, and the way that it intertwines with your work as an actor. Yeah. How important do you think that is um, for, for, for acting as a whole? I mean, we obviously, as people, have our own different belief systems, if any. I mean, there are people that say that they're agnostic and, or, or um, they just don't believe in anything. Yeah. So, how, how strong of a role does that element of spirituality play in your preparation and your success as an actor or performer in general? Uh, uh, that's when, I mean, doing quite a lot of shows, I realized that this is a calling. We've got people, and this is a gathering of people who have a calling, Greg Makoma, Tulani Chaoke, uh, the musicians, and, and, and a a calling is not just a, a, an African thing. We've got Vincenzo, the best pianist in the world. He's playing, the, it's a calling. If he doesn't play a piano, he gets sick. If I don't act, I get sick. Uh, uh, Greg, if he doesn't dance, he, it, it's a calling. So I'm glad they, this is the gathering of people who have a calling. There's no social media actor on this stage. So, yeah, and it's a calling again to tell this story because it wouldn't be told if you didn't have people who have a calling. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be this good or it wouldn't be received by our audience the way they do receive it mm -hmm. if it was not performed by people who have this calling. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
uh, yeah, I, I, that makes sense to me. And especially because, you know, I, I described the show as organized chaos, um, but it's chaos that really conveyed meaning and made me feel things and made me question and made me want to research, you know, for more. How do you guys, as the cast in general, make sure that as chaotic as everything is and as much as things are going on all at the same time mm. that you all are in tune and you guys meet your marks and um, but you still are channeling that spiritual part and putting on a show I know that it, it, it can't be easy to, because you know there's, there's something happening on this side of the stage and then on the far end of this very big stage there's even more happening so there's a lot of cognizant thinking and making sure that things come together how do you guys ensure that that happens throughout the show? I think the Colleagues are going to William Kentridge. He knows how to place an abstract situation, whether in his visuals or on a piece of paper or in all his works. He doesn't want the ordinary. Mm -hmm. He wants people to be responsible for their sight. Mm -hmm. What do you see? And whatever you saw, it's right. There's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. So inter the interpretation from this side is different. People are watching the show from, you make your choice. Mm -hmm. And he even gave you an option as audience, 50 meters. Make your choice. Where, what do you want to watch? What do you want to hear? And whatever you hear and whatever you're watching is right. Interpret it your way. That's William. He's smart. He's another guy who, who's uh, uh, spiritual and he also has a calling. Mm -hmm. So because he was an actor before, but he couldn't be in the soapies and all that, but he found a way of expressing himself as an actor. And this is the piece. I'm sure you've seen the nose, Sibyl, all the pieces are not just ordinary. Mm. It's high art, mm. abstract. And I love it, abstract being, well, I used to love uh, abstract at the exhibitions, you know, uh, holding a glass of red wine and looking at those paintings. Now I'm in it. Yeah. So people are reading it from me. I'm like, okay, good luck. Mm -hmm. The way William puts it, good luck, unpack it. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because after the show, people, are, they buy beers and they drink, they start discussing, what did you see? And they said, oh, and then they, uh, all the ideas converge and they form one problem mm -hmm. which should be having a solution. And it's beautiful. Agreed. People must talk. It's about time. Definitely. And I'm really enjoying, um, you know, the, the passion that I'm getting from you because you can tell that you're so engrossed, I mean, in, in, in everything that is of this piece. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of the answers that I've gotten from you have involved William Kendridge because obviously this is his production. So Except, except that this, this is his production. William respects his team. Okay. William respects the text. Mm. William respects any idea that you contribute. He doesn't crush anything. He tries things. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is what you suggested. Let's try it out. Well, no, 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 it doesn't work. And, 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 and if, if it works, he'll be honest and tell you that, no, this works and that's it. So, yeah, he's, he's open-hearted. He's a creative. Hence, I said, he, he, he's, he, he has a calling and he was given people who, are, who have a calling and, yeah, but he's, he's ama it's amazing. In fact, if I had started acting with William Kentridge, I wouldn't have worked with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other people are abusive, you know, and you don't enjoy rehearsals and all that. No, William, if it's tea break, go. Mm -hmm. Go smoke, guys, and come back fresh. Go recharge. And, and ah, he's amazing. <laughs> answered my question. Um, so, what are you hoping to see going forward from this production? It's a huge production. It's it's international. What are you looking forward to going forward? Uh, I wish global governments could subsidize this production and let it tour the whole world. Because we only we opened a Tate Modern in London. We did Germany. We did Netherlands. We did America and then we came to South Africa. Mm. So, yeah, they must put in money so that we can make our people aware. But you know, politicians, they won't fund it because it's, it's going to point a finger at them. Mm. Yeah, so whoever has money must just put it in here so that we can spread this, this word and make sure that people learn and know their mistakes. Mm. And maybe the war in Ukraine could stop. It's all those things. It's unnecessary. In 2023, people are still fighting mm. for power and land. 
it's because they don't know. They haven't seen shows like this. This, this show says, let's stop the war now. It's enough. Let's explore love and peace. That's the head and the load, yeah. The head and the load is now showing at the Joburg Theatre's Mandela Theatre until this Saturday, the 6th of May. For tickets, visit www.joburgtheatre.com. <laughs>